go where the fish is biting. One of the saddest things sometimes we can do is when we begin to pray for people and we begin to invite people to church, we begin to try to bring people to Jesus Christ and we usually start with our family. Like if you come to our church and you got touched, you got blessed, you go back home and you try to tell your mom. You try to tell your dad and especially if they're from you know maybe a catholic background or uh, non-church going background they're like you know great great and so they think it's kind of one of those things that you went like in school and it will wear off until next day you're coming and you say hey mom i gotta tell you i had a demon come out of me last week and then your mom is like you said what came out what out of you and that's when your mom is like dude this is a cold this is there's some there's some witchcraft stuff right there going on and so and then you bring a book to your parents you're like hey you gotta read this it's called a Jezebel you're like okay sunshine you just crossed the line and then guess what you start doing after that and then you feel like the devil has risen against you and so you start praying and fasting that your mom will get saved and you keep nagging your mom for example or your brother to get saved that is the worst things that you can do for them because when you've told them once, you've told them a second time. After that, you have to stop nagging them or your closest friends. Why? Because the more you nag and the more you invite them, the more they'll push you away, get angry at you and you destroy the chance of them giving their lives to Jesus it's almost like you have to put them aside and put them into God's hands keep loving them once in a while still kind of slip it in but not an every week or every month thing because you still have to sh let the light shine they see you every day but you have to focus on the person at work who just got hired and they're brand new in town they don't know no one you have to focus in the cafeteria in school and someone who is a loner and nobody ever sits with them those are your people can somebody say amen you know when Jesus started his ministry walking around saying I'm a Messiah you think his mom and his brothers came in with the gifts and say we always knew that we always knew that no they came with bodyguards and the Bible says they came stopped Jesus meeting and they said Jesus we came to take you back home you're out of your mind imagine that can you imagine the insult when your own family does not believe you're the Messiah Jesus could have easily said okay guys I'm shutting down my Jesus Christ Nazareth Ministry Association and I'm gonna go try to fix my family first. I come back to you in about 25 years. No, the Bible says he just looked at his family and said, hey guys, I love you guys. I will always do. I will always be there. But I gotta keep on keeping on. And three years later, guess who's the pastor at Jerusalem Church? James, the brother of Jesus. Where is the mother of Jesus when Jesus left 50 days later? She's in the room praying to Jesus. How did God change their hearts when Jesus didn't obsess with their rejection but he kept on reaching other people and God went and changed their life. Can somebody say amen. God will save your family. God will touch your closest friends but don't stop on them. Obsess and focus on others who don't know Jesus yet. Can somebody say amen. We have a lot more things to share but I think that's good for now and we're going to come to a point right now of asking the Lord to give us the burden give us the desire and help us to be people who are fishers of men in Jesus name. Amen.